Hey guys, welcome back to part one of our level two, how to use Cubase 9.5. In this series, we're obviously continuing from our uh, level one track that we wrote, and we're going to be covering some more advanced um, topics and uh, some more advanced mixing effects and editing, etc. So I'm going to jump straight into it. Um, right now, we're going to just do a a little bit of tidying up and also um, set up our buses and uh, auxiliary returns and sends um, for effects. Um, so I'm going to run you through all of that right now. There's a few different ways that we can set that up. Um, for starters, I want to set up buses. Um, obviously, this is a pretty simple track, so there's not going to be a whole lot of, of bus is going on it's probably not 100 percent necessary but i want to do it anyways because it's an important um uh, it's an important thing for especially when you're sending off um tracks for mastering i get a lot of clients that when i ask them for stems from their bus mix they have no idea what i'm talking about so i, I want you guys to be able to do this as i feel it's something quite important um so what this entail entails is i uh we're gonna separate our mix into um, elements and then run those into bus groups um, so that they can then be mixed uh, mixed in a more sort of condensed manner. Um, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One way is to just go up top here and add a new track. And let's say we're going to add a group channel. Uh, there we go. So add group channel. We have a couple of options here uh, to consider. Track name, we're going to call this drums. Actually, I always prefer to do uh, one kick, uh, even though the kick is just a single file. Sometimes I have a kick with um, multiple different kicks layered on top of each other, but I do like to have the kicks separately um, for, and for mastering purposes. It makes uh, a big difference to be able to control that level by itself. So I always do create a, a kick channel by itself. We're going to say create insight folder because I want these as a mixed bus group um, at the top here, not uh, just comping for adding effects to different tracks. So let's go ahead and create that track. It's going to put down at the bottom here now, so we're going to move this up. Let's keep it here. This mic channel we can actually just hide for now, as well as the... Uh, steer out, we can hide that as well, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we have our, let's just color these something different that we, we know that they're there. Let's go, just make them white for now. Um, right, so to do a single track, um, to root this kick, if you want to look at uh, it, if we look at the top here, we have our routing, which is stereo out. Now we want this to be routed to the kick bus first, and the kick bus will then go to the stereo out. So the 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 way we do that is we just uh, click on the routing, and we click groups kick. Uh, you can also do this from the mixer. If you open up your mixer channel, and let's just minimize these strips. Um, let's click routing, and you can see the kick is now routed to the kick bus over there. Uh, yeah, so um, I think you can actually do it from uh, yeah as well. I know you could, yeah yeah not if it's a not if it's a sampler track if it's an audio track you should be able to do it directly unless you go down there we go. Uh, if you do this one, direct routing, you can set it up there. If it's an audio track, it's slightly different. Um, so now we've we've uh, sent our kick to this one. Now we need to send our drums to a separate one. So let's do this the same way as the last one. We can add a group channel, add group track. We're going to call this drums. 
uh, inside folder. If you create this outside folder and create it outside of that groups thing, you can put it in here, but we don't want that. We want everything in there. So let's do drums. It's already. Let's click that add. Okay. So now I'm just going to show you how to route multiple channels to the same bus at the same time. We're going to select all of these. And you see you can send them to stereo out here. But if we do um, drums here, you see when I deselect them, it's only sent the first one to drums, which is not what we want. We want them all sent to the same uh, bus. So again, let's actually look at this from the mixer window. So open up your mixer and when you have all of them selected, if you do Q-Link, that'll work. Another way to do it is, let's just turn two of these off so that you can see that how this works, is to hold down Shift, Command, then select, oh, my apologies. Shift, Alt, select drums. So holding down Shift, Alt, and then selecting your output will um, send them all to the same spot. Or you can have Q-Link turned on. That'll, that'll do exactly the same thing if you're routing them from the mixer window. So there you've routed all of these to, if we solo the drum track, you'll see they're all sent to the drum. Kicks on its own. So the bass line, we're going to quickly just set up uh, one for the bass. We'll just add a group track again. The bass is going to be by itself. So we're just going to quickly route the bass to the bass channel. Now I want to do a different way to add. Um, I'm going to put the leads and the pads and the appreciator all in the same bus. Um, or perhaps we should keep the leads separate. And I'll tell you what, let's do the effects then in this way, um, because those definitely need to all go to the same bus. Let's uh, go up here and look at macros under edit. You want to go to macros, and you're looking for one of these macros here called select a track to new folder and add group channel. Now macros, you can actually assign a... Um, Shortcut 2, which is super handy. That's what I've done in this case. Um, select the tracks to new folder and create group channel. So let's try that. I have that as Control Command F. You can set it up to whatever you want. So Control Command F will bring this up for us and it will say add group channel. We're going to call this FX. Create inside folder. That's correct. Let's do add. If we go up here now, we have an FX folder, and if we look at these, they are all routed to FX automatically. The only thing here is it's created a group channel in, or a, a folder track inside a folder track, so we can just move it out and delete that one. So that's a nice, easy, automatic way to set up your groups as well. Uh, we'll do the same for the pads and appreciators. Let's do so Control Command F. Um, we'll do pads and ops. There we go. And we'll send the leads by doing the same thing as well. Uh, we'll just call that leads and we'll leave them in their own in their own bus. Great. So that is oh, let's move this one to a new folder track as well. And we will just quickly give these names. So they all need and ARPS and FX. Cool. And just for the sake of everything looking the same, let's label that one. And um, so here we have our groups. I'm just going to move these around a little bit. There we go. I like the FX to be the last one. So uh, we can see now we have all our FX on that.
That's great. So um, this just allows us to do submixes on this um, at a later stage. And also when we uh, export our track, if we are exporting for a mastering engineer to do a stem mix, um, these are the tracks that you are going to export as is, and uh, not just a stereo output. Great. Um, now what I'm going to quickly do is send, set up uh, some sends. So like group channels, um, group channels, you route an entire signal to a group, a group channel. So there's no blending or anything and there's no return. Once it goes to that group channel, then it goes out to the stereo out. So FX channels or aux sends and returns um, operate slightly differently in that you have a little bit more flexibility as to what uh, you send to them and how much you send to them. Um, and also whether the fader affects what is being sent or not. Um, so I'll show you how we set that up. We have, again, a few different ways. We're going to set up two different reverbs um, on effects channels for use later on with our mix down. So let's just go, uh, the one way to do it is our standard add track over here. You can add a FX track. Let's call this um, perk reverb. Uh, which is just going to be a short percussive reverb. We can select our effect now. If we go to our a reverb, we have a number of uh, Rev X you will not have in Cubase. These are Steinberg plugins, but they come with my hardware. Uh, you will have Roomworks and Reverence and Revelation. Um, let's try Reverence, which is an impulse response reverb. It's quite nice for sort of natural sounding re uh, rooms. We'll go for that. Um, we're going to create inside folder because I want to keep our FX channels in their own group over here. Um, and the rest looks fine. So let's go add track. It loads our reverb for us. And here's our FX channels, which I'm going to move to the top. Right below our group channels. And let's just make these a different color. Perfect. Um, so another way to do this is actually directly from inside the channels that you're working with. Let's say, for instance, we want to, uh, we're going to add a reverb to our lead sound. It actually does have a reverb on there from... Um, from our effects section in Retrolog. We're going to just turn that off for now for the sake of this tutorial. And let's just loop a section there. Um, all you have to do to set up another send effect now is to just go to your sends. Um, if you click here, you'll see you have perk reverb set up there. You can route to that. You can route to groups as well, um, just partial uh, a, a partial mix of this you can route to a different group so it can be quite flexible we're not going to do that um, we'll come to sidechain now and, and then you can also route partial to outputs as well um, but we are looking to route to perk reverb so we'll set that run up even though we're not going to use the perk reverb but to add another new effect now you can also just right click on uh, an empty slot and you'll have this uh, option over here to add FX to channels, uh, FX channel to send to. This will create a new FX channel. We'll click that. Same options as before. This time, let's choose Revelation. Uh, we'll call this Long Reverb. And create Inside Folder, Add Track. And then you go, you have a new track with a new reverb. Now you can see how these sends work. Why don't we go ahead and select a preset. Great, here we go. Um, let's select Cathedral Bright and see what that does. And that's a suitably long reverb. So, um, the way the sends work is that you can send a certain amount of volume to the reverb and then the reverb gets sent to the outputs. 
So you can hear that uh, that would be dry. And we can dial in more. Great. So um, there we've got some reverb set up. We'll leave a little bit of reverb on the sound for now. We can automate a bit of it later as well. Um, the beauty of these uh, um, send and return or these aux sends is that you can actually add additional processing, processing to it as well. You don't have to have just the reverb. You can add whatever other effects you want. Um, say, for instance, uh, a good a good thing to do as well is to actually use the EQ on this channel. We can actually roll off a little bit of the bottom end of the reverb so we don't have too much of the... Possibly a little bit of the top end as well. And now any of our channels can utilize those reverbs that we've set up. Um, you can use reverbs as insert effects as well, which we'll come to in a bit. Um, there are benefits to doing it that way as well, but generally speaking, reverbs will often do as send effects, um, delays to even compression. Um, I will touch on parallel compression with this uh, just now as well, um, where we'll actually we can use a, a send to send a signal to a compressor and mix that in with a dry signal as well. Great, I think that's uh, that does it for the routing. Um, next up, we'll start covering a few mixing techniques, I think dynamics processing, and then we'll set up sidechain compression um, on some of the things like the baseline and the leads, etc. Right, I'll catch you in a sec. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.